Hi, an SBC chart or statistical process control chart is a very popular chart, especially in health and manufacturing. We're going to build one in Power BI over the next 10 minutes. There's no SBC standard visual in Power BI, but we can take a line chart and add a couple of reference lines and a couple of slices to control it uh, together with some measures to calculate our values. All the information that you need, if you want to follow along, the data and the links are in the comments below. So let's get started. Let's have a look at our sample data. It's fictitious data that I've created. It's got values for four regions, North, South, East and West for every day uh, this year, 2023 and last year. The data is available on the website and if I click on the raw button we can see it exactly as it would be if it was a CSV file and we can use this URL which is in the link below to bring our data directly into Power BI Desktop. I've launched Power BI Desktop and I'm going to bring that data into the query editor. I click on get data and go to the web. I'll paste in that URL to the raw data set. At this moment, you might get a credentials challenge, just say OK to Anonymous. I've done it before, so it's remembered that. The preview looks good, and I'm going to click on Transform Data to bring it into the Query Editor. Once I'm in the Query Editor, I'll do a few changes. First of all, I'll just call this Table Data. Secondly, we don't need this index column, so I'll remove it. Thirdly, I created data for all of 22 and 23. Today is the 1st of May. So for realism's sake, I'm going to go and remove any data before that. We're assuming this is all historic data. So date before, and I'll click OK. Finally, what I'd like to do is to pivot these four columns. So I'll go to transform, unpivot these columns I meant. So we've got attributes and value. I'll call my attribute a region and my value is fine. These values could be um, temperature readings, they could be waiting times in a hospital A&E, uh, all sorts of things. Let's now click on home and close and apply and bring our data into Power BI proper. Now let's build the basics of the visuals that we need. The SP chart is basically a line chart. I'll create one there, I'll make it big and on the x-axis I'm going to add my date and on the y-axis I'm going to add my value. What we've got there is we've got a line chart with two years because it's using the auto date time. I'm going to click on right click on here and rather than the date hierarchy I'm going to choose the date. I want to see it day by day. Next I'm going to build a slicer for my four regions. I'll click on the page so I can create a slicer on that slicer, I'll put the region field. I'll make it a more appropriate size. And at the moment, what I can do is I can click on more than one region. I'm going to say that that's not really a possibility. It doesn't make particular sense in this my scenario. So I'm going to select, come here. I'm going to select this. I'm going to go into more options. And in my slicer settings, I'm going to check, make the value selection single select so we can just select one region at a time. I'm going to create another slicer which is a slicer on my dates. Typically we want to see the most recent dates, not all of them. So again I'm going to create a slicer and this particular case I'm going to click on here, go and add data and the data that I'm going to choose is my date. It gives me a between slicer but I'm more interested in having a relative date slicer. So I can look up, for example, the last three months of data. There we go. I'm going to do one other thing to improve my chart. I'm going to come to the formatting and in the lines, I will make the stroke width a bit less uh, because we're going to put a lot of reference lines on there. And I'm also going to add some markers as well. Now we need to create some measures that are going to act as the values of our reference line, our central, upper limit and lower control limit lines. Let's start with the central line. So I'm going to create a measure. 
I'm going to call it central value and I'm going to make it equal to the average of the value column. Once I've done that, I'm going to put that on a reference line, the central line. So I'm going to come to the chart, add visual elements, more options. I'm going to go into reference lines. I'm going to add the line and I'm going to call it central line. And it's going to be a Y axis constant line. And the value is going to be set to my new measure. My central value. And what I'll do is I'll change the color of that to a dark gray. I'll also want a label on it. And on my label, I'm going to choose both the data value and the name. So I'll choose both there. And I'll also make that label um, color the same dark gray. So what we've got up here is we've got a reference line, the central line, which is the average uh, of the values for each particular region. So if I change from south to north, then we can see that the, the value changes. Our next task is not essential, but it's good to have. It'll keep our measures and our field list organized properly. Since we're going to create several measures, not just central value, let's put them in their own table. So I'm going to go into enter data to create a small table, empty table called calculations. I'm going to load that table in. There it is. And I'm going to click on my central value and move it for in, from my data to my calculations table. Once I've done that, I can get rid of this column one empty column. I can just delete from the model. And my calculations table, the icon changes and you'll see that it's just got one measure in there. Now let's create some measures for our upper and lower control limit. To do that, we have to first of all create standard deviation because we'll say that upper control limit is uh, the central line plus standard deviations. The lower control limit is the central line minus two standard deviations. So let's start off creating a new measure, this time in the calculations table. We'll call it SD and we'll say that it's going to be equal to the standard deviation of, again, the value column. Once we've got our standard deviation, we can create our new measure, which is our upper control limit. And that's going to be equal to our central value uh, plus two times our standard deviation. Let's build our lower control limit. And that's going to be equal to the central value again, minus two times the standard deviation. Now let's add those reference lines for the lower control and upper control limits. Again, we're going to reference lines. We're going to add a line. This line I'm going to call my lower control line. It again is going to be a Y axis constant line. The value I'm going to make to be the measure, our lower control limit. And I'm going to make it a different color this time. We'll make it a, a deep red color. There's our line. We're going to add a data label to it. And again, we'll change the color to the same color. And we'll choose both the name and the label. And there's our lower control line. In a similar way, we're going to add another line. This one is going to be called our upper control line. I'm going to choose a line type again same again I'm going to choose a value which is our look upper control limit this time again I'll choose the same dark red color and I will again switch the data label on and that's looking good I'll change the color and I'll set it to both and there we have our lower control line and our upper control line. As well as our horizontal reference line, if there was a particular event happening on a particular date, we want, might want to mark that as well with a vertical line. So I'm going to come in and add a line. This line I'm going to call big event. 
it's going to be an x-axis constant line and I'm going to choose a date and I'm going to choose a fixed date maybe say February the 14th a few months ago. Finally let's add a data label and choose both label and value. You can download the Power BI file that I've built here, uh, link in the description below. I've just spent a few seconds adding a couple of uh, tiny improvements. For example, a dynamic title here, goes from East region to North region, and a couple of tidy ups. So for most people building an SBC chart, this is all they will want to need and know. For a few people, they might want to take it further. They might want to have the markers, those circles, a different color inside and outside of the chart. They might want to build the uh, calculations based on an average of a historic period, say 2022, rather than the average to date. They might want to flag conditions, for example, eight successive rises in the values, even if within the, the chart itself. If there is a demand for that, let me know and I will do another video that talks all about those things. If we do, we'd have to go more into data modeling, into DATS calculations and into uh, concepts such as uh, filter content. But until then, see you later. I hope you've enjoyed the, this particular video. Thank you.